Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Android Authority. Now, one of the best known mobile processor manufacturers is Qualcomm. And Qualcomm, of course, make the Snapdragon range of processors. And you can find these processors in everything from low-end phones, mid-range phones, flagship phones, tablets, and even laptops. Now, of course, all these mobile processors have different numbers on them, 845 and 636. And sometimes all these numbers can be a bit confusing. So today I want to give you an overview of Qualcomm's range of mobile processors. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, before we dive into the details of the individual processors that Qualcomm make, let's have a quick look at what is a mobile processor. More technically, we should call it a system on a chip because it's not just a CPU, a central processing unit, and it's not just a graphics uh, processor, or a GPU, a graphics processing unit. It's actually made up of a whole bunch of different uh, components. So you have a CPU, multiple cores, you have a GPU, you also probably have an image processor for processing those pictures from your cameras. You will also have a modem, a 4G LTE modem of some kind. Then of course, there's a memory interface that will go out to uh, LPDDR4 or maybe LPDDR3 memory. Then of course, you've got wireless communications like Bluetooth and you've got uh, things like Wi-Fi. And then of course, on top of that, you've got other functionality like let's say Quick Charge and Qualcomm have their Quick Charge system. And as well as all those different components and designs, the actual physical chip can be manufactured on different uh, manufacturing processes, which we quote in nanometers. It's basically the measure of the gaps between the transistors. And the smaller the gap, the more power efficient the processor is and the higher speeds can be achieved. So older chips might be on 28 nanometers, and then we kind of came down to 14 nanometers and 10 nanometers, and the bleeding edge uh, processors of today, now at the end of 2018, are kind of at seven nanometers. So looking at the CPU side for a moment, all of Qualcomm processors have multi-core designs, and those designs mainly come from ARM, the company, of course, that is responsible for the ARM architecture. Now, Qualcomm have a special license with ARM, which is, uh, allows them to actually take the design and tweak it slightly. There are some parameters that can be tweaked. It's not, you can't do a redesign, but there are different things that can be tweaked, and they're allowed to market it under their own brand, which in Qualcomm's case becomes the Cryo. So they call them their Cryo CPU cores. And most of Qualcomm processors, as I said, are multi-core. Normally there would be, in an octa-core setup, there would be four high-performance cores and four low-performance cores. However, Qualcomm do have some variations amongst that, including some that have two high-performance cores and six uh, power efficiency cores. And we'll go to look into that when we look at the individual processors in a moment. And for graphics, Qualcomm use their own in-house Adreno designed GPU. And for each new generation of processors that come out, they are increasing the performance and the power efficiency of those uh, current uh, GPUs. And so every year we're expecting a performance increase and a power efficiency increase. And this is all handled in-house by Qualcomm. And they don't sell that GPU to anybody else. So when you buy a Snapdragon processor or a device with a Snapdragon processor, you know that the uh, GPU in there comes from Qualcomm itself. And the other thing that Qualcomm are, do all in-house is their modems. That's the 4G LTE modems for talking to your cellular network. Now, Qualcomm specialize in building modems, again, for themselves, that they put inside of those SOCs. Qualcomm do also sell separate chips that actually other manufacturers can use. And in the past, Apple have used their modems in some models of their iPhones. And the thing about 4G LTE is all about the current standards and whether you support the current uh, fastest speed. So one of the differentiators that we will see as we look across the range of Qualcomm's uh, processes is that the flagship ones have the latest, greatest, fastest uh, 4G LTE modems. And as you go down the range, they put in cheaper and, uh, you know, and uh, less uh, higher performance modems in the different uh, processors. Okay, so that's a quick look at all the different components. And basically what Qualcomm do is they choose which particular CPU they want to pair with which particular model of the GPU. And they look at which a kind of image processor they want to put in there and what memory they want to connect it to and whether they support quick charge or not. And then they wrap it all up and they decide what process they want to use to manufacture it. 
and obviously the older the process, the cheaper the process is gonna be. If it's a bleeding edge process, and that's going to be more expensive. And then once they've decided all those combinations, they say this is gonna be a processor aimed at this particular market. Now the way Qualcomm divide up their marketing is they have the 800 series, which is their flagship devices. They have the 600 series, which is their mid-range devices. Then they have their 400 series, which is their low-end devices. Now there are some changes here and there. For example, we're gonna see there's actually now a 700 series, which fits between the 600 series and the 800 series, and we'll look at that in a moment. And they also have some other devices for things like wearables and so on. But in general, these are the three categories, 400 for the low end, 600 for the mid range, and 800 for the high end. So this year's flagship processor from Qualcomm is the Snapdragon 845. Last year it was the Snapdragon 835, and the year before that it was the Snapdragon 820 and 821. So let's have a look at these three processors in a bit of detail. So going back to the Snapdragon 821, that actually used four CPU cores that were designed in-house by Qualcomm itself, and that was coupled with the Adreno 530 uh, GPU. It also had an X12 LTE modem, which allowed a maximum download speed of 600 megabits per second and 150 megabits per second upload, and it could support dual 13 megapixel cameras. It had support for Quick Charge 3, and Bluetooth 4.1, and this was produced on a 14 nanometer process. Now I just mentioned megabits per second there. If you ever get confused about the difference between megabytes per second and megabits per second, I do have a video over on the Gary Explains channel, which will tell you all about the differences, and I'll link to that here in the description below. Now the successor to the Snapdragon 821 was the 8 Snapdragon 835, and now uh, Qualcomm went over to using these ARM processors using this special license agreement they have called Built on Cortex Technology. And in fact, it had four Cortex A73 cores and four Cortex A53 cores, which were marketed under the Cryo 280 uh, branding. And that was coupled together with the Adreno 540 GPU. Now the Adreno 540 GPU, as far as I can understand, is really like the 530. However, it's been shrunk down to the 10 nanometer process which of course the whole processor was built and there are some other internal tweakings but basically it was still a fifth generation Arduino and there's some tweaks that made it the 530 over to the 540 but a big step here in the LTE modem now with a thousand megabits per second possible download speed still sticking with that 150 megabits per second upload speed and for the camera now dual 16 megapixel uh, camera support quick charge 4 and of course Bluetooth 5 and as I mentioned earlier, all built on the 10 nanometer process. And this year we saw the Qualcomm 845, which saw the move over from the Cortex A73 to the Cortex A75, from the Cortex A53 to the Cortex A55, and they were coupled with the Adreno 630, which is a new generation of GPU, and the X20 LTE modem with even greater download speeds. Uh, quick Charge 4 again, Bluetooth 5, and 10 nanometer production process. Now, if you do wonder what a Cortex A73 is and a Cortex A75 and a Cortex A55 and so on, I have videos about all of those different processor designs here on the Android Authority channel. So I'll also link to those in the description below. Now below the flagships, Qualcomm have a set of mid-range processors, which are called the 600 series. And we'll also have a look at the newly announced 700 series. At the low end of the 600 series, we have the 632, which again is an octa-core configuration using uh, Cortex A73 with Cortex A53 and Adreno 506. So that means it is the fifth generation, but it's a much lower version of the uh, GPU. It only supports LPDDR3 memory and it has a lower modem, the X9, which has a download speed of up to just 300 megabits a second. So different CPU, different GPU, different modem, different memory support, that's a whole different mix, and that means it's aimed at the uh, low end of the mid-range. However, at the top end of the Snapdragon 600 series, we've got the Snapdragon 670, which has got two high performance Cortex A75 cores, and that's the same cores that you find in the Snapdragon 845, and it's got six 
of the Cortex A55 power efficiency cores. And again, that's the same cores as you find in the Snapdragon 845. We've also now got the sixth generation GPU, the Adreno 615. And then basically the rest of the stuff is very, very similar to the Snapdragon 660, except for now, of course, we've moved over to 10 nanometer. So as you can see, at the low end of the mid-range processors, things are quite different. You've got a less performance CPU, you've got a slower GPU, you've got slower memory, slower modem. And as you go up through the mid-range, we're starting to touch, grab hold of the coattails of the flagship devices, now using the same kind of CPU design, the same GPU design, faster memory and better LTE modems. Now this year Qualcomm announced the Snapdragon 700 series and there's only one processor in that series at the moment and that's the Snapdragon 710, 710. Now let's have a look at it and compare it to the Snapdragon 660. So as you can see, it's the same uh, octa-core setup, but with two high performance cores and six uh, energy efficiency cores, just like the Snapdragon 660. It's got the Adreno 616 GPU compared to the Adreno 615 GPU, which means there are some minor differences there but probably it's not much of a huge uh, step up there. However, importantly, it's now got the X15 LTE modem with faster uh, download times. It also supports up to dual 20 megapixel uh, cameras. And again, the same quick charge 4, Bluetooth 5, and on the 10 nanometer process. And then below the mid range, we have this low end range of processors, which are in the 400 series, which really are aimed at budget and price sensitive handsets. Now all the processors in the 400 series are based on a 12 nanometer uh, fabrication process. So that's a bit better than the 14 nanometer, not quite as good as the uh, 10 nanometer right there in the middle. And they all exclusively use an octa-core design just using the Cortex A53 uh, processor. No high performance cores here, no Cryo 385s, no Cryo 280s. These are just Cortex A53 cores. And basically it's a combination of the different GPU and the different modem to give you that kind of different price point. So let's take a look at a relative performance graph to show you the differences across the whole range. So of course, as you'd expect, the Snapdragon 845 is the clear leader out there with the best performance that Qualcomm have to offer today. And you can see that actually it has a significant performance increase over the Snapdragon 835. Then below the 835, as you'd expect, is the 821. And then we have the Snapdragon 710. As you can see, the Snapdragon 710 is very, very close to what the previous flagship device could achieve. And then below that, you've got the 670, which as I said, very similar to the 710, but clearly that difference in GPU has made a slight difference there in the overall performance. And then as we go down, we can see the 660, the 636, and the 450. And then clearly the 450 is much, much slower than the Snapdragon 845. So the basic rule of thumb is this, the higher the number, the better the processor. So the 845 is better than the 835, anything in the 600 range is better than in the 400 range, and so on and so forth. Now before we close, let's have a quick talk about the future. I'm recording this video in October of 2018. If Qualcomm follow their previous form, they're going to be announcing a new flagship processor in December of 2018, and then into the early part of 2019, February and March, we'll start to see phones being announced that use this new flagship processor. There is some questions about the naming of this processor. Will it be the 855 to follow on from the 835, the 845, now the 855? There are some other rumors that Qualcomm are gonna change their naming completely, and it might be the 8155. We really will have to see what Qualcomm announces at the end of the year. And it's also worth mentioning that Qualcomm are very much invested in the idea of Windows on ARM laptops, always connected laptops. So these are laptops that run Windows, but not on an AMD or on an Intel processor, but actually on a Qualcomm processor. And I have a video over on the Gary Explains channel talking about the Snapdragon 1000 and the potential for next year for a whole new uh, performance level when it comes to these always connected uh, PCs. 
Okay, that's about it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Android Authority, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please do subscribe, and please do hit that bell notification icon so that you know every time we drop a new video. Okay, that's about it. I'll see you in my next one.